I asked, you answered, and it's time to find out what you think about generative AI for video games. Hey everyone, I'm Tommy Thompson. Welcome back to Artifacts here on AI and Games, my video series looking at all things generative AI and design. Earlier in 2023, I released a video that provided an overview of the current state of generative AI and highlighted both the potential and the pitfalls of this technology as it begins to make its way into gaming. At the end of the video, I issued a call to all of you out there on the internet who watch this channel to share with me how you feel about generative AI for games. And to do that, I issued a survey for you all to fill in and share your thoughts on how it interacts with your relationship with games. We received over 250 responses to that survey, and in this video, I'm here to summarize the results and give my perspective on its findings. So strap in as I share your thoughts on the matter, your excitement, your trepidation, your concerns, and your anticipation for generative AI in video games. Now, before we get into the results, it's worth highlighting the sort of responses I received and where they're coming from. The response pool is largely reflective of my regular YouTube audience, with 90% of responses from those between the ages of 18 and 45, and 84% identifying as male. Similarly, 47% of all responses came from Europe, with a further 32% from North America. As such, it's important to take this into consideration, given there can very well be perspectives and opinions that are not reflective of this particular demographic. And as such, please leave comments after watching the video if there are specific thoughts you have that you don't feel were captured by this survey. Further to this, it's also worth breaking down the careers of our respondents and also the types of relationships they have with games. Only 22% of our respondents are those who work full-time as a professional game developer. This isn't terribly surprising, given we're asking some pertinent questions about the adoption of generative AI, and many developers will be concerned about violating an NDA. But I am nonetheless grateful for y'all taking the time to fill it in. We'll dig into the results momentarily. While all participants were asked about their thoughts on generative AI as a game player, each demographic had their own custom questionnaire asking them about how generative AI may intersect with their careers when it comes to games. So let's dig a little further into what each group had to say and, where possible, share some insights from these wonderful people. So let's start with the game developers. For the survey, I really wanted to build a broader perspective on three key aspects. First, what the sentiment is like in different games companies with regards to adoption of generative AI. Secondly, how, if at all, generative AI is being adopted in these studios and lastly, whether it's through use of third-party tools out there, such as GPT, DALI and Copilot, or they're building their own tools internally. The latter, of course, is a big deal given the ongoing legal issues surrounding many third-party systems, be it their building of datasets without artists' consent, and of course, the lack of copyright that can be attributed to those outputs. The responses captured a fairly broad spectrum of the games industry, ranging from indie studios all the way up to AAAs like Blizzard, Creative Assembly, Frontier, Ubisoft and Xbox Game Studios. Plus, unsurprising given this channel's audience, the majority of submissions came from programmers alongside designers, though it's worth stating we also had concept artists, animators, producers and narrative designers in the mix as well. The results presented on adoption of generative AI paint a picture of caution and enthusiasm for their use in game productions. 20% of developers stated that they are not permitted to use generative AI at all in their games, as dictated by the heads of the studio. Conversely, 7% stated that they are told to use them by the studio, 39% of developers said they're using it as a personal choice, while the remaining 34% said they're not comfortable using them. So already, we see that despite this generative AI boom, over 50% of those participating stated that right now they cannot or will not use generative AI in their day-to-day -day workflow. And part of that is very much the legal ambiguity that surrounds it. To quote some of the written responses I received, We got a message explicitly forbidden the use of generative AI due to the dubious legal situation surrounding them. Since we usually do contracting work, this goes doubly so. I am not aware of any available generative machine learning models, services, etc. that have been trained ethically and so cannot feel comfortable using something created by essentially stealing other people's work without permission and reimbursement. For those who are using generative AI, it largely fell into three main camps. Concept art, coding tools, and a combination of NPC dialogue and story. Much like what I've showcased earlier this year as we explored both Convey and InWorld's offerings. But digging into it, 
It seems that while the latter is very much for the purposes of production, in the first two camps it's more for use in ideation rather than use in the final product. As one developer stated, I don't really ever see anything AI generated surviving into a game wholesale without a person touching it and changing it. The sentiment appeared a lot in the comments, with the idea to use generative AI to bootstrap productivity rather than to replace people in a creative role. We've been deploying it mostly as a tool, like mentioned in your video, to enhance productivity and effectiveness. It doesn't appear to be something that's even capable of replacement at this time, nor is leadership seeking to do so. Now, these two comments are reflective of an overall trend that I observed. If generative AI is being used in games, it's often as a first step to get something into the game, followed by iteration to improve it. After all, getting the first pass into a build is often the trickiest part of any creative endeavour. It's only with time do we iterate, and at that point the creator's imprint is so thoroughly embedded in the final product that I would argue that issues of copyright are largely going to be resolved, though, of course, I'm not a lawyer. But also the other key aspect of this was that it's being used by developers to allow them to do their job faster, not replace them entirely. This was a theme that I raised in some of the questions that I provided. Are developers concerned that the hype is making an impact at a managerial level that they would consider reducing the number of developers on staff? This is particularly relevant in 2023, in which the games industry has had a horrendous time dealing with an unmitigated number of layoffs, with an estimate of over 9,000 people having lost their job. So much of the generative AI hype has been centred on the idea that AI can do all of these things better and faster than a human, but the results suggest that cooler heads are prevailing, with the idea being to find tools to speed up workflow rather than fundamentally alter it. This is, to my mind, the inevitable future of generative AI as tools are built to support this approach, working within established development processes rather than trying to upend them and enable developers to build games more efficiently rather than simply replace them. The final outcome was one of mixed enthusiasm and trepidation. While around 25% of developers stated that generative AI won't make any impact in their job, and a further 49% felt it had the capacity to make it easier for them in the long run, there are still concerns, and much of it lay with those in charge. While I do believe that such tech could be utilised to improve the lives and work of many roles across most disciplines, I do not trust that it will not simply be used to push for even lower salaries than are already present through devaluing labour and threatening redundancy. This is of course a sentiment I have voiced and agreed with largely over on AI and Games Plus, as I discussed the impact of generative AI on the sector, but it's interesting to observe how developers worry about the expectations of senior staff being mismanaged as a result. A director needs to communicate their vision, which can lead them to using generative AI tools to quickly create a prototype, image, text, visualization, etc. of their vision. However, they can then be so in love with that idea and that first iteration, prototype, that the additional input and changes that the team provides will be thwarted and crushed completely. It's worth stating, as our closing fact, 39% of game developers were confident that management would make the right call with generative AI, 30% thought otherwise, and the final 31% remain unsure at this time. While the adoption of generative AI among our games industry participants isn't quite as pervasive as the narrative may suggest, the difference appears very much when we look at hobbyists and students. Many hobbyists who responded work on their own or with a handful of partners. Given the scope of work they have to complete independently, over 50% of these developers stated that they're interested in using generative AI, while another 36% stated they're interested in finding ways to use it. The range of applications when compared to a professional developer was much broader, with everything from code to concept art, dialogue, textures and sprites, character models, animations, sound and music, and more. The responses were also broader in how they perceive generative AI. For those who saw it useful as a tool to speed up tasks they find mundane, or simply help them get better at making games, though there were still some that found it could only really be useful to provide placeholder assets, or even in the worst case that it would hinder their ability to get better at game development, given the generative AI would be doing the bulk of the work. Meanwhile, 59% of all students who participated stated that they've used generative AI in their university coursework, either off their own back, or in the case of 17.6% of them, because their instructor told them to do so the majority of which was the use of GPT for essay writing or coding. While in most instances it was to bootstrap their productivity, there were some perspectives that I personally had not considered, namely the potential for it to make you more employable. I'm waiting to see what techniques become industry standard or used in my field, tech design, before investing time into learning AI tools. 
At the very least, it's an important short-term skill to have. Getting a job is tough, and being able to put generative AI experience on your resume is a buzzword that will get you through the door to start. Can I just say I am so grateful I got out of teaching in higher education? Drafting and grading assignments in the age of GPT is not something I want to be a part of. I toast to all of you academics out there continuing to fight the good fight. On that note, it's worth saying that I did have a segment of the survey just for researchers and lecturers, but it had so few responses that sharing the results would imply a statistical significance that doesn't reflect the number of responses. The final part of the survey was to gather the thoughts of our participants on the future of generative AI as a player. This segment was open to everyone, though it's worth saying that this includes the roughly 31% of participants who have no professional links to games. This was the only part of the survey that they completed. The questions for this segment were to address two things. First, regardless of the issues that surround it, what is the overall sentiment about generative AI as part of games as a whole? Are people excited about the idea of playing games that even use generative AI at this time? Secondly, what are the issues that people have surrounding their use in games? While this largely apes the questions raised to developers, I was conscious that a significant proportion of those participating wouldn't have any professional links within the industry, and as such, do they share those perspectives? So looking at overall excitement or interest, just over 50% of those surveyed said they were excited about the potential of generative AI for games, with the most interest focusing in areas of AI for dialogue, story generation, and interestingly AI-powered textures, which could be interpreted for the likes of AI upscaling, but also with a lot of suggestions for other areas, such as NPC behaviours, level generation, and even finding ways to improve replayability. Whether these are actually attainable, well, that's for the future to tell at this point. Reading through the written responses, there is an overall enthusiasm and excitement for how this technology will be employed. Many big budget games in recent times have had to involve huge amounts of soul-crushing busy work. I am particularly interested in the improvements that can be made by being able to more easily when this busy work is outsourced to generative AI tools and artists can spend more time on things they actually care about. Being able to make something that looks good despite having no artistic knowledge, an actual artist will be able to find issues with my AI-generated images that I wouldn't even consider, or take way less time to get something usable. But the difference between I will never have anything and that's pretty good is insane. As a consumer, not much. As a developer, I look forward to being able to automate the boring, mundane parts and allow focusing on the more interesting and creative aspects. But perhaps unsurprisingly, the issues continued to mount up and we had significantly more people write about their issues with generative AI compared with their excitement. By partially removing the human aspect of it, if not done properly, it could potentially reduce the quality of the final product. In the end, companies are all about money, so they will always try to reduce costs as much as possible, even if it means assigning less human labor than the minimum necessary. General iteration speed will allow project managers to further reduce allocated development time. This is already happening at my job. Also, generative AI will take away most junior slash intern positions, making it harder for new talent to access both AAA and indie workforce. A huge issue already visible in generative AI projects today is that it has revealed just how much executives and managers are willing to accept low quality work if it is done at an incredibly low cost. I think that there is a huge danger in people's work being systematically devalued as generative AI tools are used to first mine their work for training and then deployed to produce low quality copies at relatively no cost compared to human workers' wages. As I wrap up this video, I want to take a moment to give a big thank you to everyone who participated in the survey. Personally, the results did not surprise me all that much. It was very much in line with my own expectations, particularly the difference between engagement with generative AI tools across game studios versus hobbyists and solo developers. As I've said in other videos, and elsewhere on the internet, adoption of generative AI is going to be a slow and gradual process, particularly in professional studios. But there is enthusiasm, mixed up among the many legitimate concerns about its deployment, be it in overall production quality, mismanagement, and the legal and ethical considerations. I'd be interested to see how these opinions evolve over time, particularly as the tools improve as AI companies realize they're better off creating tools to optimize existing workflows rather than seek to supplant them. Far from a unique situation in AI circles, let me tell you. Or developers will build up their expertise and do it themselves. Not to mention, as legal frameworks are going to be better defined, this will also help, I feel, in the long run. 
Thanks for watching this episode of Artifacts, and once again, thanks to all who shared their thoughts, plus an extra special thanks to everyone who shared their voice for this episode for the quotations lifted from the results. Don't worry, I'm not going to steal your voice samples and train my own voice AI. Honest. This will be my final episode here on AI and Games for 2023, and we'll be back talking about even more in the worlds of AI and generative design next year. Alright Ben, cue the music, stay safe, take care, and I'll be back.